We saw blue sky and sunshine today, but I'm tracking more snow this week. Your forecast is coming up next. Widespread snow and ice causing delays in vaccine shipments. We'll let you know how it's impacting us here at home. Spokane Public Schools already offers COVID-19 testing within its school district. And soon, about two dozen more Eastern Washington school districts will be able to offer the same. We'll share tonight what that means for those districts. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Welcome everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. Well, under Governor Jay Inslee's new announcement, 50 more schools across Washington will now offer COVID-19 testing. Overall, there are 22 districts in eastern Washington that are starting that testing, including nine right here in Spokane County. And with the school year now being half over, this is part of a push for more in-person learning. Kremlin 2's Amanda Rowley is live tonight with the latest reactions from a local school district. Amanda? Well, Republic School District is one of the many Eastern Washington school districts that got approved for COVID-19 testing program here in the state. It started the school year with reopening for in-person learning, and it had about 30% of its students opt in for learning from home. Republic School District just learned it was approved for COVID-19 testing this afternoon. I got to hear Superintendent Kevin Young's first reaction to the news. We live in a very rural community. Our hospital has done a great job, but I think if we can um, sort of add uh, to the availability of testing and, and, and make it happen faster and easier for our patrons, um, that's going to be nothing but a huge advantage. Since the beginning of the school year, Young says there have only been two cases of COVID-19. And while Republic School District has taken several steps to ensure the well-being of its students, Young is glad it will have an additional way to monitor and protect the health of its students and their families. If we can eliminate some of those barriers and, and have parents and students deal with people they're familiar with and, and a safe, trusting environment, um, it, it, it's going to really help be more efficient and I think get more people to to get tested. Republic is still in the planning stages of setting up COVID-19 testing. It is working closely with Tri-County Health District on this. But Young adds having a smaller school district may be to its advantage. I don't know how the bigger schools do it. I mean, that that to me is a logistical nightmare that I'm glad we don't have to deal with um, because, yeah, we, we know everybody and know everybody by name and, and, and I can't imagine us needing to test more than a few people every day at the most. Now, many other Eastern Washington school districts are also in those early stages of planning and implementing the COVID-19 testing program in their respective districts. I did hear from Deer Park School District just moments ago, and they told me they're excited to be involved in the testing program. And earlier today, Cheney and Mead School Districts also told me that today they had their first planning meetings on how they'll implement the testing program. Now, Spokane Public Schools started offering COVID-19 testing for its district on January 11th. And Mark, I understand you experienced how that process works firsthand. So I wonder if you could share some insight on what families can expect. Yeah, it was actually, Amanda, really easy. We found out last week we had contact with somebody who tested positive for COVID. So we all had to go get tested. So we signed up online through the district. Uh, we did that the night before. Then 9 o'clock the next morning, we went to, I believe it's Chase Middle School up here behind Ferris in the South Hill. We were the second person in line. A person nurse came out and handed us all the swabs. We swabbed our mouths, gave them back to her. And in, within 36 hours, we had our results. Thankfully, we tested negative, but the process was really easy. And you stayed in your car. Yeah, we stayed in our car. Easy. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. So yeah, it, it certainly worked well you. for us and I imagine it'll work well for other people too. Sounds Thanks. good. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Amanda. And the CDC says deadly winter storms will cause widespread delays of vaccine shipments over the next few days. The weather brought a tornado to Brunswick County, North Carolina, killing at least three people. Texans dealt with another night of record low temperatures in the single digits as millions shivered in the cold and the dark. The electrical grid that grid there just can't keep up with demand. And it turns out those delays are impacting us right here in Spokane. Yeah, our Casey Decker has details now on who could be affected and what it means if your appointment actually needs to get rescheduled. The mass vaccine site at the Spokane Arena is expecting a shipment of roughly 4,000 doses. Originally, that shipment was expected to come in on Tuesday. Now, it could be as late as Friday.
the vaccine themselves come from Mississippi. I just learned that this morning. But administrators say at the moment, arena appointments don't need to be rescheduled. In anticipation of the delays, they only offered appointments Thursday through Saturday. And they have enough vaccine from the last shipment to cover the Thursday appointments. However, if they still don't have the new shipment by Friday, they may need to start rescheduling. In the meantime, two other major providers have already announced they are rescheduling appointments because of the delays. Providence posted on Facebook that all of today's appointments at Holy Family Hospital will be pushed to next Monday, with everyone keeping their same time slot just a few days later. They told people with Thursday appointments to watch their email in case those need to be reslated as well. And Multicare said all its appointments for yesterday and today were rescheduled, posting that they'll reach out to patients individually to inform them of their new times. For people who are still waiting on their first dose, this is sure to cause some anxiety. But for those waiting on their second dose, today the local health officer said, don't worry, a few extra days won't make much of a difference for you in terms of your immunity. If you do miss the uh, your second dose by a few days, a week, 10 days, it's not really going to impact the effectiveness. You need to try to stay as close as you can to the date for your second dose. But if you have to miss that by a week or 10 days, it's really not going to have a significant impact. Casey Decker, Crem 2 News. President Biden gave a new timeline for vaccinating Americans during a town hall event last night on CNN. He clarified his goal of reopening schools during his first 100 days in office, saying the new goal is to get kids from kindergarten through eighth grade back into the classroom. Many of them five days a week. The goal will be five days a week. Now it's going to be harder to open up the high schools. Now, the president said teachers should be given a higher priority to get the vaccine. As for the general public, President Biden says by the end of July, the U.S. will have more than 600 million vaccine doses, enough for every American. All right, we want to turn our attention back to weather. The Inland Northwest certainly saw some sunshine today. Look at that sunset. I was just going to say, look at behind <laughs> us. My goodness. Yeah. Uh, Tom, in terms of the weather, it was also noticeably warmer today compared to earlier this week. It was fabulous. Well, that's what the sun will do for you, right? Blue right. sky and sunshine and very, very little wind. Now we're tracking partly cloudy skies this evening with some foggy areas. I still think we're going to get snow, one to two inches of snow Thursday night into early Friday morning. But by Sunday, we're going to see temperatures warm into the 40s could even see a little rainfall on Sunday. Right now we're at 33 degrees and the winds are calm, so that makes that 33 feel like well 33 degrees. When we take a look at the radar, you can see we haven't got really any precipitation. We've got a few very, very light snow showers over northern Idaho, more in that kind of flurry or skiff uh, range. It will get cold tonight, though, because of some of that lack of cloud cover down to about 19 and some of that those areas are really going to get set up in fog. And then tomorrow we'll look for a daytime high of 36 six degrees. I mentioned the snow uh, really moving into the area by about eight, nine o'clock tomorrow night for the weekend. 37 and dry on Saturday, 41 on Sunday could see a little morning snow. And if it continues to precipitate throughout the day, it'll change over to rain as we look for that high of 41 temperatures get close to 50 on Monday. I'll check that part of your forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. And Spokane's full city plow still underway. You can keep track of the progress online right now. Crews are working the routes that are highlighted in purple green indicates completed areas. They will head to the areas in red next to track the status of main roads and residential streets. Just visit our website creme.com. Also keep in mind with the cold weather, homeowners need to keep an eye on those pipes. Here are a couple of tips. You can open the cabinet door so the warm air from the house can circulate around the plumbing. Leave a trickle of water running in pipes that are exposed to an outside wall that could freeze. You're going to want to, of course, disconnect all your hoses and insulate your outside faucets with those foam protectors. You also need to know where your water shutoff valve is just in case a pipe does indeed burst. Local bars and restaurants gearing up for their first full weekend of being able to bring customers back inside their establishments under phase two of Washington's reopening plan. Businesses can resume indoor dining at 25% capacity, but several viewers have reached out to the Creme 2 Verify team to ask if karaoke is allowed under phase two. One local bar owner told me that karaoke is a huge draw for his business. Do people come to your bar specifically for karaoke? Oh, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll, It'll double the revenue for us on a, on a given night. 
So is karaoke allowed under phase two? I went to the State Department of Health to find out as well as Spokane Regional Health. You can catch my Verify report coming up tomorrow night on Creme 2 News at 11.